start then. Um, what do you, uh, in, in terms of uh, path-derived latent variable analysis, what do you think is the next uh, next step beyond what's been done? I mean, estimating speed and distance traveled, those are pretty fundamental things that you want to be able to do accurately. What's what's next on the list after, after that? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we have the, the, the code and everything coded up for estimating speed and distance traveled. We've worked on parallelizing it. We've worked on making it computationally efficient. We've worked on making it um, statistically efficient as well. Um, so that's that's been well fleshed out and, and resolved. But what's not possible is effectively any other, um, in, a, in a quick and easy way, is any other met path derived latent variable. So what I'd like to work on next is road crossings because that's another major um, major conservation oriented issue. People go out there and they collect data a lot and they're trying to understand how species cross roads, how many times they cross roads, where they cross roads. And a lot of the time it's just done by straight line interpolation which has all sorts of issues related to measurement error related to scale dependency. Um, so that's going to be the next one. I think that we tackle in a reasonable, try to tackle in a reasonable way, um, so that we can help um, help people on the ground know when and where animals are crossing roads and how often, so that they can design strategies for, you know, introducing stop signs or speed regulations or speed bumps in in the right places um, that are actually properly informed by the movement as opposed to being um, dominated by bias. So that's the next one, and then the post to that would be trying to understand how much space that these animals, uh, sorry, how much time these animals are spending in different different habitats. Do they need this much time in grassland versus this much time in, in forest and that kind of thing, so that we can better decide um, how much land and of land of what type to set aside for these species. Thank you. Other uh, questions? Questions from the audience for Mike? Maybe I would like to ask uh, one question. And uh, when you estimate the home range region for these, those animals, yeah. is there a chance or a method to use some external data for that? Yeah, so... so elevation, for example, or vegetation or... Yeah, so um, the, the, the kernel and the, the estimation process currently is non-parametric. It does not involve any type of um, underlying information from the habitat. There is the potential to um, improve these things. Uh, there have been some attempts at doing that of various quality. Um, but the generally speaking, um, the approaches that have been used that attempt to do that um, miss the autocorrelation informed bias. And from what we've been seeing, the autocorrelation informed bias is by far the most important um, for this type of estimation. Um, so, you know, there's there's definitely room to improve these things because there's, you know, certain boundaries where like if there's a fence or something like that that the animal absolutely cannot cross. Um, and incorporating that information can improve your estimate. Um, but what we've found so far is that um, even just a manual manipulation of the data of the, the density estimate afterward, where you like manually clip off to regions where they can't go and renormalize the distribution, uh, actually gets you a much better estimate than anything else out there that would otherwise attempt to do those kinds of things. Um, so it's sort of like a yes and no. You can try to do an approach out there using CAN methods. It probably won't result in anything particularly great. Um, and we would like to maybe do something along those lines, um, but like we have this like laundry list of things to do that's just ex growing exponentially. And um, from what we have seen so far, the benefit that would gain from be gained from that is getting down to the point where it's minimal, mm -hmm. um, like small percentage of improvement in accuracy versus the other major issues that we've been focusing on. Is a question that came in on the chat. Yeah, so um, so the question is focused on um, migratory animals. And is there a difference in methodology when animals are migrating? Yeah, so there absolutely is. Um, 
a lot of the stuff that we, we've been developing for home range estimation uh, assumes that the process is stationary and that the animal occupies a fixed um, distribution in space over time. So if you let this uh, process run out into infinity, um, the amount of space that it will occupy is finite. Um, migrating animals don't um, follow that. They either you know, switch from this range residency stationary distribution to uh, burst migration to then a, a, a secondary range residency and then hop between the two. Or there's also nomadic species, which um, don't actually have any type of stable distribution either. Um, so migrating animals are at the extreme end of this effective sample size region where um, for a lot of them, like you only have information on one single mi migration for an animal. So your sample size is effectively one and will only ever be one, uh, maybe two, three, if you have the same animal repeated over multiple years. But you're at the end edge where you have very limited amount of information. Um, depending on what the actual question is that you want to answer with these data, there are methods for fitting models that um, are appropriate for migratory animals, reconstructing the paths, and then estimating path derived latent variables. Um, but if you're trying to estimate like a distribution over like where this animal is likely to migrate, um, that's a sort of more challenging thing because they don't actually have a stable distribution. Um, I don't know if that necessarily answered your question per se, but yes, there are methods for dealing with migratory animals. Um, generally speaking, though, the questions that you want to answer are different. Um, so we haven't quite um, focused on, on those questions yet per se, although the tools that are in the package that we've been developing are um, can be applied to those. Just add one uh, thing specific to more kind of more specific to birds. Um, there are uh, limits on the devices that, uh, based on the animal's body size. So a small animal needs a much smaller device. Um, so for tracking migratory birds, many of them are very small. You can either get something like a, a like a um, like a geolite locator that gives you really really imprecise data where you can only localize where the bird was maybe within a couple kilom a couple hundred kilometers, or something more accurate like a GPS device but with a tiny tiny battery that can only take a, you know small number of samples and so you don't get a very good uh, representation of where the bird went you just sort of see where it started and where it ended so you can kind of say well somehow it got in between those points. Um, and those different types of data and different qualities of data uh, require somewhat different approaches on the analysis side as well. Any uh, last questions for, for Mike before we wrap up here? No? Okay, then thank you all for coming. Uh, thanks, Mike, for the nice talk. And we will see you guys next time. Yeah, thanks for having me now and for listening.